Hi there. In this tutorial, I'm going to demonstrate how to create an effect something like this. So we've got here a simple glass goblet and we're pouring some wine or colored water into the goblet. So it's really just about the basics of an animated water simulation and how to put it into a container rather than just have it exist somewhere. You can run this at various different qualities. So this is a sort of intermediate quality at 256 resolution and I'll explain about that as we get into the tutorial. And the higher you run it, the more realistic the simulation. However, it can take quite a long time to create the simulation. So it's a trade-off between those things. And I'll talk about the materials as well. If you enjoy these tutorials, don't forget to click like and subscribe. Feel free to comment or ask questions or even dislike the video. And if you don't like the video, I'd be very interested to see what the issues you spotted were so that I can improve going forward. If you're a Patreon supporter, I do upload these files for any use available to my Patreon supporters and I upload tutorials quite regularly. So let's start the tutorial. So to begin with, let's create our glass. So I'm going to add a simple mesh circle to begin with. We'll go into orthographic view and we'll go into edit mode and press E and then click and then G Z and we'll just go up a little bit right there. E click G Z. Now one of the things to bear in mind is there can be some differences in how the fluid appears to behave depending on the size of your model. So by default you're going to find the dimensions are quite large. So you can see this glass is about two meters across. You can try doing it much smaller, but you'll often find with simulations, especially fluid simulations, that they don't work so well at accurate sizes. So if this was 20 centimeters across, for example, it wouldn't look so realistic. So we've created the base of our glass there. So I'll just press E, scale it in lift it up slightly. I'm not going to go into too much detail. I'm just showing you basically how I modeled it. E, G, Z. I'll scale that in there. I really just did it to a point where I felt the proportions were about right and they always need tweaking later. And of course you can always model it on a real glass. So once I've done that, so I'm now going to press Control R and then just use the mouse wheel to give me a couple of cuts there. Click twice and then scale shift Z so it doesn't scale on the Z axis. And we'll bring that out there. And we're, then we'll just open up this top slightly as well. It's probably not gonna be exactly the same as the one I created and open up the base a bit too. And then created some subdivisions there. Now for my purposes, what I did was I actually selected alternate vertices on here. So you can say select, check a deselect and can I just lift those out a little bit like that. I'm just going to add some additional vertices just there. I'm going to come down here, E, click and then scale in and then F to close it. And I'm going to add some additional vertices and just bring them in. So that's control R to do that close to that edge there. Now I could use the solidify modifier to, to thicken this glass up, but actually I need to be quite controlled in the thickness of this glass because that's quite significant to the function of the simulation when it uses this as a collision object. So I'm gonna press E and then click and scale in and then press E, click and G, Z again down to there and then scale it in to be about the same thickness, basically lining up the slope here. Then E and click GZ down to here. Again, you can see it's excreted outside of the model there. So we then scale back in. E, click GZ. And I probably want just to become slightly below that point because I can imagine how a real glass would look. I don't mind it getting slightly thicker. And then E, G, Z, scale it in. And finally, F to fill. If we look at what that looks like now. So it, the glass is solid. So the idea is that there are no strange holes or anything like that in it. If you have slightly problematic geometry, you will probably have problems with your simulation. So 
So that's shade smooth, but I haven't added a subdivision surface yet. Before I do, let's just have a look up here, face orientation. And you can see this is all red at the moment. So that means this is actually the inside face that we're looking at. So what we need to do is come up to here under mesh, normals and flip. And now there it's all blue. So this is now an external face. That would have really caused us problems. I think the base is proportionately a little large. So in actual fact, what I think I'll do is I'm just pressing control plus there, scale shift Z and scale all of this up slightly and that looks a bit more in proportion control 2 and that adds a level 2 subdivision surface I'm still not happy with the size of that base so scale shift Z coming in a little bit there okay that'll have to do so that's our cup and we'll just add some materials to that so we'll come over to here and say new we'll open a new window up here and we will go to the shader editor you can use the principal shader but for this sort of thing, the glass shader is fine and just connect that into the surface. The bulk of it, I made simple clear glass and for sort of lead crystal type glass, 1.569 is about the right index of refraction. I did experiment with using the new shadow core sticks with this. And although I could get some effects from it, I found it hugely increased the render times. And so for this tutorial, I decided not to include those. Caustics are where you get the little bright spots and things caused by refraction and reflections. So we'll call that clear glass and then we'll duplicate that material. Click the little two so it's unique and we'll call that blue glass and obviously make that a nice dark blue. We'll give that a blue color in the viewport display just to make it easy to see where it is. And we'll just select those two sets of vertices initially and assign. And you can see we probably want to go a bit further than that. So we'll assign it there. So we've now colored that little bit blue. So next we need a container from which to pour the glass. I modeled a big sort of jug. I'm just gonna do a very simple container. So we'll do a mesh circle again. We'll expand that. I'm not gonna to worry too much about the aesthetics of this container, perhaps not too much. And we'll lift that up there. And then we'll look from above I'll select that vertex and we'll turn on proportional editing GX and you can see in fact what I'll do is set it to sharp and we've got a little spout there control 2 to add a subdivision surface and set it to shade smooth and then we need some thickness because this is also going to be a container for fluid so this time I'm just going because it's a very simple shape I'm just going to add a solidify modifier At this point I'm going to control a and apply scale and I will just double check face orientation so that's okay everything's blue and I don't think I applied scale to my glass so I'm going to apply that there as well again this is quite important as often is the case with any kind of physics simulations you need to make sure you've applied any scale At the moment I'm just going to move that subdivision surface down here and then I can see what I'm doing with the solidify modify a little better, which you can see is just adding thickness. And I want it to be quite thick actually. It's a ceramic jug if you like, but more importantly, that will make the use of this in the fluid simulation a lot easier. So we can now take that spout out a little further. And what I will do is apply it strictly. I don't need to, but it saves problems later and I can make tweaks to geometry if I need to more easily in some respects. So that's my jug. So I'm just going to tip it over to about there and then lift it up, making sure it's going to tip in and not just dribble down and perhaps give it a bit more height just to make it more interesting. Maybe it doesn't need to be quite so large. Time to name a few things. So that's my glass. That's my jug. And we'll just give the jug a basic slightly yellowy material with a bit of reflectiveness on it. Don't worry too much about that. So now we're ready to start creating the fluid simulation. So I'm going to add a mesh. Doesn't matter too much, but I'm just going to add an icosphere. I'll go to wireframe and I'm just going to put that in here. Strictly, I should probably fill this with fluid one way and then add fluid to that, but it's not really necessary for this effect. Not for the way that I did it. The bigger this is, the more fluid there will be initially to fill the container. Again, add the scale and we'll call that inflow 
I'm now just going to go to object, quick effect, quick liquid, and you can see it's put a fluid domain around that object, but it's not really where we want it to be at the moment. So I'm just going to bring that out, that box, I've gone into edit mode. This box is the domain. It's where fluid existence and movement is calculated. If it wasn't for this, Blender would be trying to do it for an infinite universe, which would take a little while. In case any of the fluid drips out, I'll go just below. And in case it splashes up inside the jug, I'll go just above the jug. And obviously we want to make sure we are enclosing the whole of the jug. So I think we need to be slightly wider. So scale on the Y a little there. So that's our domain completely enclosing our little world of fluid simulation apply that scale. That little cube there is going to move down to this corner in a moment, but that gives you an idea of the resolution of the fluid simulation at the moment. And if you look here at the distance between the inside face and the outside face of the glass, you can see it's much smaller than this cube. That means this fluid simulation isn't going to really work very well with this glass at the moment. It basically, the resolution is too low for it to properly recognize the existence of this glass, but we'll worry about that in a minute. So if we select our icosphere and we go to physics properties, at the moment that's set to fluid type liquid, and that means a little ball of liquid will be created to match the shape of this icosphere, and it will fall from that point, ultimately into the jug. That's not exactly what I wanted to do. What I want is for more fluid to be generated so that it would start to pour out. So I changed this to inflow instead of geometry. Don't worry about sampling substeps at the moment. If your fluid is needing to move very fast at certain points, you may need to add substeps, which is where instead of looking at where the fluid is on say frame one and then on frame two, if you set a substep of one, it will also work out where the fluid would be on frame one and a half. It obviously can't display that because it's not rendering frame one and a half, but it is working out where the fluid is and how it's interacting, which gives you a more accurate representation. It's not always necessary. It depends on how fast the fluid is moving. The faster it's moving, the more likely you're going to need substep. But we'll worry about that shortly. If I press play now, nothing's happening at the moment. And if we go to our domain, there's our resolution. And that's what equates to that resolution and it's automatically created a cache, you can set that to somewhere else. And its start and end by default will be 250 frames. I'm going to set this just to 100 for the moment, and we'll set this to 100 as well. We may well need more than that to get the thing full enough for fluid to be coming out. So by default, just playing the animation should start to bake it. But you can see there's nothing really happening there at the moment. So I just tweaked the resolution up and down again, and now we can see something. So you should be able to see, if I turn these grids off to make it easier to see. You can see we've got particles and they're actually changing in a way that gives you an idea of what the speed of those particles are. So where they start, they're quite a dark blue and then they get up to a lighter sort of light green yellowy sort of color and then change back to dark blue here. So that gives you an idea of how fast. And at the moment it's using the domain walls to enclose it. You can change that you can turn off collisions here, in which case the fluid will just disappear when it leaves the domain or hits the edge of the domain. But obviously at the moment, the fluid is not recognizing where these objects are, the cup and the jug are. So first of all, let's select our jug and click fluid and change it to effector. So that tells it it's a collision. And now we'll press play and we often need to just tweak something here because otherwise, so just turning the resolution up and down again, will force Blender to rebake rather than just assume that its bake is okay. So it's clearly recognizing the existence of the jug, but a lot of the fluid is still leaking out, though some is piling up inside the container, as you can see. So partial success. Now, I mentioned to you that the thickness of the walls and the walls on this jug are quite thick, I'm glad to say and the resolution of our simulation are relevant. So you can see the fluid seems, or the surface of the fluid, seems to instantly stop, even as soon as it hits the ground, about this high off the bottom. And of course, that is the height of one of these little boxes, which is the voxel resolution of our fluid. So 32 is pretty low. So let's just double that to 64, which will of course mean it will be or slow in simulating it. So now you can see 
we've got a smaller little box there. So let's try that. And as you can see, it's simulating much more slowly. And so far, at least, nothing is leaking out of our jug. I made the walls of this intentionally quite thick so that it would be pretty easy to fill without a lot of tweaking. We may need to increase the wall thicknesses of our glass in order to not need a very, very high resolution for our fluid to do this tutorial. So that's sort of work. Well, it, that's working now. It's starting to fill the jug. Let's see if we can make it fill a little more quickly. So I'm going to select my inflow object. I'm going to say on the Z, let's give it a velocity of one meter per second. And let's see what that looks like. And we may need to, of course, force it to rebake. You can see the colors change now because the fluid is moving more quickly. So that's probably not that different to what it was to start with. So let's try 10 again. Probably need to remind Blender to redo its cache. And we can actually see that 10 meters per second is 10 meters per second up. We probably want minus 10. It will, of course, start to all splash out because that's quite a high velocity. It's quite fun. So you can see we're getting a lot of fluid pouring out there. I rather like it, but it's probably not going to be very useful if you want a glass full of wine. So let's go for minus five. Always good to go too far one way, too far the other way, and then hopefully find somewhere that works in between. And you can see because we're going faster, we're now getting a few little bits of fluid escaping there. It's probably still a little too fast. So let's go for minus two meters per second. That's actually still quite a high velocity really. And we need to tell Blender to rebake. Just a couple of little particles escaping, but not too bad now. And you can see that's now filling the container much more quickly and out it comes. So I'm relatively happy with that. Obviously it's just passing straight through the glass at the moment because the glass isn't part of the simulation yet. So the next thing to do is to make our glass part of the simulation. So we'll select the glass, say fluid, and we'll say effector. We'll need to select our domain again and make it rebake. And I'm not expecting this to work because we're still at a relatively low resolution and the glass is still relatively thin. But let's see how it does. And you can see why it's a good idea not to just go straight up to the highest resolution and start trying to configure all your settings. You should start at the lowest resolution of simulation that works and then slowly adjust things and tweak things up and slowly increase the resolution as you need to and only go to the resolution that you need to over time. So you can see this is just falling straight through the glass at the moment. Now I wouldn't simulate this at 64. I would definitely go to at least 128 and the one I did for the animation was 256 which took quite a few hours to simulate. On my machine I need to replace this machine but we can help not have to go to very, very high resolutions by not having such a thin wall for our glass. And as it's a glass, it's not too noticeable anyway. So I'm just going to hide the subdivision surface, which just make editing a little easier. Select that set of vertices and then come all the way up to the top there. And now scale shift, just turn off proportional editing, scale shift Z and just bring it in. I'm going to bring that bottom face up a little as well, I think, because if the glass is thick anywhere, I think this is where it would be thick. So we'll just lift that up there. So let's have a look at our simulation now. So we'll just trigger the rebake. So it's still falling through, but some of it, I think it is being affected now. We've got some slightly thin areas there. I haven't turned the subdivision surface back on. So there's an area just there that is a little thin. So I'll just take that ring of vertices and just scale those in a little. Now you can see we've got a more consistent thickness there now. Again, though, if you look at the thickness here relative to the size of this minimum resolution, that's still not really going to work. But what I want to do is get as close as I can before I then turn that resolution up because it is going to start to take longer. So although fluid is still escaping, you can definitely see it's starting to pile up in there now. So we're close. Now I could just make this a really, really thick glass. But of course, what I need to do is to turn the simulation resolution up now because it won't look terribly good at 64 anyway. So we'll go to 128 now. You don't have to go in these multiples, but that's what I tend to do. So this is going to take significantly longer. Now what we can do, come down here and say modular and say all, and then we can click bake. 
And if we click here is resumable, then we don't have to bake the whole thing to see how it's doing. So let's just click bake there. So now that's not quite working the same way. It's still doing the same thing, but it's doing it in a way that will allow us to just stop the simulation and then start it again. It won't try and do the simulation when we play. And you can see what frame it's up to there. So that's baked and you can see, although it's not perfect, that's much better now. You can see that it falls in and even though it's relatively fast moving, most of the fluid is staying in there. And as I say, even 128 is quite a low resolution for a fluid simulation. That took several minutes to simulate, but I think that's quite acceptable really. So I could play around with looking at things like sampling substeps. So I could put a sampling substep on there and that might do it. And notice in order to rebake, I need to free the bake because it's all being baked. But for the moment, I'm not gonna worry too much about that. Now, right now, all this has done is created a kind of particle system, which simulates the surface of the fluid. In order to have geometry that we can represent fluid with, we need to turn on mesh here. And there's a few options to do to change things in here, but the default is fine and we'll bake again. So it will take longer to bake once you turn mesh on because effectively it has to sort of bake twice. So that took a little while. But you can now see not just the particles, but we've got fluid simulations right you can see we've got a little bit of escape there and there's a bit here as i said to fix that really you need to turn the resolution up but while i'm making the tutorial we'll just stick with this relatively low resolution version so if you don't want to see the particles anymore you can just go to the particle systems and just turn them off there they won't be visible in the render anyway but there you can see our fluid as i say some of it is escaping at the moment so let's just set up a few materials now i use multiple lights and some surrounds but i'm just going to do a very basic setup for this so we'll just put another uv circle on and fill it and that'll be our base I'll have that just below the glass and that will help give some bounce light as well and then what i think i'll do is for the background we'll use an environment texture and i'm going to do that because reflective and refractive things often look a little better with more realistic lighting so we'll try this one and we'll just move the camera around a little bit and we'll have a look at how that's starting to look so you can certainly see we've got quite a thick glass there you want a thinner glass what you can do is simulate with a thick walled glass and then replace it with a much thinner walled glass where the inner wall is pretty much where this one is if you see what i mean so you, in other words you don't have to render this glass you could render a glass which is much thinner walled but isn't the one that was used for the simulation itself that makes sense again that's a little bit of a bodge so at the moment we've got completely clear glass like fluid pouring into a completely clear glass so not a lot to see there so let's tweak some of our materials if we select our liquid domain you get a default material setup and I pretty much used that, but I decided to color the fluid. So we'll make that a nice red color. It could be Ribena or whatever. And then I decided to add a sort of blue absorption color to it as well. I'm not sure how much that affected it and that works volumetrically. 1.33 is the index of refraction of water and most drinkable fluids anyway are gonna be somewhere around that. Perhaps we'll make this a slightly darker color. Maybe we'll have a blue cast to it. And if you want to, of course, you don't have to have that background visible. So if we go Go to world up here there's a little trick that you can do i'm going to add an input which is a light path input and i'm going to make a new version of the background node which is just set to black and i'm going to add a shader which is a mix shader and drop that there and put the black background into the other side so all the way over here it's as you see all the way over here it's a black background and as we've got no specific lights in the scene this whole scene goes dark so if we take is camera ray and put that into there you can see only the objects in our scene are showing up there's one slight issue in that where we can see through this glass the background is actually showing up so we can click and add a color mix node into there and just add in is transmission ray. What that's done is it's saying if it's rays of light coming directly from the background or via transmission through glass, show black, otherwise allow it to be seen. So we'll see, we can see reflections, which is what we want, but we can't see the background directly. It's not realistic, but it just allows you to illuminate the scene environmentally without actually having your HDRI in the background if you didn't want it to be there. And you can see we'll get issues such as the darkness down here 
and you can play around with various settings. Ultimately, I'm sure when we have proper core sticks, that sort of thing will be solved. But under light paths, it'll be worth adding a little bit for volumetrics, which will help with the fluid color, increasing transmission a little bit. And then you can decide whether you want these on or off. Turning them off will make it a less noisy scene and make it render slightly faster, but may make it look slightly less realistic. And finally, we can play around with the index of refraction, see what we prefer. If I go up very high, we almost get a metal looking object, but that's obviously very, very high indeed. And you can try different calculation methods here. I'm not going to go into all the different possibilities for render settings here, but what we will do is just give that a quick render. We'll just do 128 samples, but we'll use automatic denoising. So that's very roughly put together and you can see how this works. I'll put on the screen now the final simulation again, and I'll see you in the next tutorial. Thanks a lot.